The Federal High Court in Lagos has dismissed an application by former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Diezani Alison Madweke, seeking to be tried in Nigeria. Justice Rowan Aikawa agreed with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, that the application was a bid by the former minister to escape justice in the United Kingdom. Legal practitioner Mande Ubani joins us in the studio now to comment more on this development. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very Let's much. Let's start with the EFCC's position that she's mm. trying to escape justice. How, um, to what extent do you identify with this sentiment? Well, I... I, am, I don't work in EFCC, EFCC, so I don't know why they came to that conclusion that she wants to escape justice uh, uh, from the United Kingdom. Uh, but my position is this. It is very strange in criminal proceedings for you to be begging the government to charge you. Uh, the government charges you based upon evidence. And they, I don't know under what rules of evidence and or under what procedure uh, that you want to be a party to a criminal proceeding. So it's the government that charges. It's the government against uh, the individual who is alleged to have committed a crime uh, is totally strange. You know, it's only in civil uh, proceedings that you can want to be a party. Except, of course, yeah. her mm. things, her properties are mm. being uh, taken over mm. by the EFCC. Mm. Don't you think that's supposed there should be a room for some kind of here, here, in here? Yeah, the, the, you, you can start an action in civil proceedings. You have uh, what you call rights in, 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 in remedy, remedy in law. You know, by civil action, if you feel that your, action, you know, your property has been taken wrongly, you can sue the government and then present a better reason that you are the owner of the property, the government has no right whatsoever. But you seeking to be joined as a party in a criminal proceeding is clearly total strange. It's a, clearly an absurdity. As you want because to stay the state must line, yeah. choose who to charge at any point yeah, in time. Yes. To, mm. to pick up on Busolami's point. Yes, yes. Um, the court has ordered even permanent forfeiture of her mm. assets That's now. Right. So, what should uh really be the mm. procedure you know the court after the court takes over permanent forfeiture of mm. your assets what mm. wh how will she now then be joined yeah. even if they don't uh, grant her application mm. to be tried back home you know before final forfeiture you know that's what they call interim forfeiture uh, at that time you are given a timeline within which to come uh, with a proof that you are the owner of the which property. the government has denied right now no, no you don't understand what i mean you, you that can be done without you being physically present she has okay. the right to come to nigeria you don't even need any application to the court to be allowed to come into your country. You are not banished by the country in the first place. Okay. So it doesn't require the court to even ask you to come back to Britain, I mean to Nigeria. So to me, it's totally strange asking that you should be allowed to come back. Is there any law barring the Zani from coming into Nigeria today as, you, as we speak? There is no court order. There is no official gazette banning her, you know, outright from entering Nigeria. So to me, it's a too, too strange application. You have a right to come into the country. And I don't think she has made any application to Britain that I want to come back to my country and they have and actually they stopped no, her. Are no. you following me? Okay. So at that time, there was an interim for future order. That is a time you can brief your lawyers with evidence. I mean, the world has become a global village, you know, with the system, with computer. You can send whatever information you have. Oh, I bought this property even prior to my entrance into government. You can send all the necessary documents and all that. And they, they now file before the, the, the Federal High Court. And they can stop the final for future. Final forfeiture only comes when there is no any information from any so-called beneficiary of the property okay. in making any claim or counterclaim. Then they go ahead and make the final forfeiture. Right, but so even at that, so, so that does not in any way deny you right forever. You so can, if she's can trying still, to you know, escape justice, according yeah. to the EFCC now in the yeah. United Kingdom, yes. will she get justice in Nigeria? Looking at the case now. The EFCC has interrogated a lot of people who are actually admitted, you know, either being as client who she got, she purchased property from, or as bank who, um, you know, facilitated the transfer of funds. So will she get justice in Nigeria or will the federal government get justice as the case may be? No, there's no way they can, you know, uh, what she's been tried in, in Britain, if it's totally different from what she's been charged there. For, okay. What they are trying to do, oh, face the criminal charge you have in, in England, and then let it be concluded with. Then you can still come back here and then face this. But for now, we want the English, the English own to be concluded before you come back to Nigeria. But if the same similar offense, of course, she cannot be tried twice, you know, twice, twice. Uh, here in Nigeria over the same Ma material matter. facts and yeah. all that. So it's important that EFCC is being careful in order to ensure that the one in England is concluded and done away with, then you can now come back to Nigeria. Okay. If there are similarity and all that, or a different case entirely, then you also face it and all that squarely. So I'm going to I think ask you a wise. question just yeah. like, like yeah. a layman. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm really. being a layperson, yes. Do you think EFCC is afraid of something, not just being cautious? Mm. I, am, I am not thinking so. I am thinking that EFCC is being wise 
in ensuring that the process that has been initiated in Britain is concluded and done away with. It's very important that we know the consequences of that particular action in Britain. So after which, you come back to Nigeria and then face whatever action that is actually pending against you. So they are being careful and they are also being wise in, in concluding at least one part. Let it not be that you are having an issue with Britain, it's not concluded. Here in Nigeria, it's not being concluded. Of course, you know our judicial system, that sometimes it drags a bit. But in England, it doesn't take much time before you get justice. All right. I, we, I wish we could pursue the <laughs> No, but we can. But, uh, you will leave it there. Leave if you have there. the time, I'm here for you. Lawyer, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks.